Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here and welcome back. It is time for a little bit of STL's Advanced Edition. We haven't played FTL in quite a while, but I figured it's time we got in here. So let's take a look at the ships and we'll talk a little bit about what we're doing a little bit differently today. As you can see here on the ship selection screen, we're using two mods in addition to our normal combination of visual mods. The individual mod links you can find in the description below. But specifically this time, we're using two mods by Lord Trilobite. The detailed crew portraits, which you can see in the bottom left there, which have uh, different uh, face views for all the different races. And we're also using the detailed ship Greebles graphics mod, which shows these internal images of all the ships that you look at, which is pretty cool. Some of them have some nice little details, which I think uh, really we make it worthwhile. I don't have as much of crystals internally, which is interesting. I think my favorite little addition, even though it's really not a big one, is just having this so section of hull cut out so you can see that somebody actually could use those airlocks. <laughs> this is a bunch of little interesting little details like that that I'm quite fond of. But what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be playing with the Rock Cruiser Type C, specifically the Tektite. This ship is an interesting one. It is, for one thing, the only ship, apart from the Crystal Cruiser, that starts you with a Crystal Crew. So for people trying to unlock the Crystal Sector, this removes most of the steps, and all you're going to have to do is get to the Crystal Homeworlds. That makes things, all, or rather the, ho the Rock Homeworlds, to be able to get through, which makes things a whole lot easier. You do also have two Rock Crew members. This ship, like all other Type C's, starts with a clone bay as well, but it doesn't start with any of the other fancy systems that the uh, Advanced Edition has added into the game. It does, however, start with two interesting weapons. For one thing, it has a Crystal Heavy Mark I, which is a single shot, one shield piercing laser, which does two damage every 13 seconds. It's not amazing, but it's something. You also have a Swarm Missile Launcher. This is an interesting missile launcher because it has the potential to be very wasteful or very good. If you fire it after 7 seconds, it fires what is effectively a Leto Missile, a single 1 damage shield piercing shot. However, if you fire it after 21 seconds, it only consumes 1 missile but fires 3 shots. All 1 damage, all full shield piercing, fire chance, all that good stuff. So the interesting thing about it is that it rewards you for being able to be slow. If you are able to charge it up fully, it's more damaging. Now, in my opinion, this makes it a bad weapon. <laughs> because, specifically, if you have the resources to be able to make it safe to charge it up, you probably don't need to be using missiles anyway. If you need to break through their shields in a hurry, you're going to want to fire it quickly, but then it's inefficient and you have to wait. So, really, it seems to me that this system is not amazing. Also, the fact that it's not accurate. It has a bit of a shotgun effect. Um, so you can't specifically target exactly one room. Sometimes the missiles will not hit. But we'll give it a try, and we'll see what's what. We'll be playing with Advanced Edition content enabled. We'll be playing on hard mode, as we have for all of these YouTube runs. And uh, we're going to rename the ship and stuff before we get started. This is going to be a fairly straightforwardly named ship. This is going to be the VSS Mountain. And we are going to be renaming all of our crew after uh, particularly prominent mountain peaks not based in any kind of rating system, just ones that I have chosen from uh, the uh, the available high, high prominency mountains. For our first crew member, we are going to be naming you... Hmm, I'm going to name you Everest, after the most obvious of uh, large peaks. There we go. We are also going to be naming you, Rista Rockman, after another one of the more prominent peaks. You're going to be Kilimanjaro. There we go. And our Crystal Crew is going to be renamed after uh, Mount Fuji, I think. There we go. So we have Everest, Kilimanjaro, and Mount Fuji. Fuji being in Japan, of course. Kilimanjaro being in Tanzania. And Everest being, I believe, on the border between Nepal and China. So, let's get to business with this ship and let's see what we can do here. Here goes nothing. The data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. We need supplies for the journey, so we have to make sure we explore each sector before moving on to the next, and of course we have to get to the exit before the Pursuing Rebel fleet can catch up. Alright, so, let's see what we got here. We're gonna power up weapons, we're gonna power up the engines by turning off our clone bay for now, because it doesn't actually need to be on really, unless people are actively dying. And, let's get down to business. So, store over there? That doesn't help us at all. Let's jump in this direction and see if we can hopefully get a good start here. We're playing on hard mode, so a good start is definitely an important thing. 
You come out of this jump to see laser blasts coming from the other side of the beacon. It looks like someone's under attack from pirates. Well, obviously, we ought to help the civilians. We power up weapons to engage the pirate ship. All right, these guys have flak and a heavy laser. Nasty combo, but we should be able to hopefully neutralize them, and odds are those weapons won't be firing in sync anyway. So we should be more or less okay. Yeah, that's good. All right, we might take a bit of damage here. We'll see. No, we're good, and we knocked out the flat cannon, so they're now harmless. We have swarm missiles if we want them, but honestly, we don't need them. That's the other thing about the swarm missiles. If you don't have to fire them quickly, you probably don't need them anymore. But we're going to crystal heavy through here. We've missed. All right, if they get that recharged, I'm going to swarm them. We'll see uh, We'll see how this goes. It's looking like we're going to hit them with the crystal heavy again before they get a chance to do anything else, though. Yep, there goes the weapon. All right, well now there's literally no point in using the swarm missiles because they can't hurt us anyway. So we're just going to keep battering them with the crystal heavy and we'll see what we can do. There we go, they still can't do anything to us. They've repaired it again, but again, the crystal heavy should knock it out before they get a chance to repair it any further, so they're not going to get a chance to do much. And we missed. All right, we may need to actually use the swarm missile for once here. Let's see, we've gotten through this fight so far with no damage after a lucky bunch of misses from the flax and the lasers. Crystal Heavy comes in, and never mind, knocks it back offline. Alright, well. This is looking like it's going to be a pretty safe battle, all things considered. Last Crystal Heavy shot, go. And that's a dead pirate fighter, never had to use these swarm missiles. We've gotten through that with no damage at all. Pirate ship breaks apart, so we hasten to contact the civilian ship, gathering one fuel, one drone part, and 19 scrap first. When we do contact the civilians, they say, This sector has become increasingly dangerous for friends of the Federation. I think my crew can patch up some of your hull damages, thanks. Well, that would be great if we took any hull damage at all. Thanks anyway, let's keep moving and see if we can get anything else around here. And we jump straight into a sun, alright. This beacon has been placed too close to a supergiant Class M star. The ship will gradually overheat until we get out of there or die. A pirate, oblivious to the danger of the sun, moves in to engage us. Alright, they've got a, a potentially dangerous weapon there. That, uh... Base, uh, brother Burst Laser 1 can knock our shields down, and then they might be able to actually do something to us here. We'll see. The mini beam is pretty well timed with it too, so if even one of those hits, we're probably taking damage. Yep, there goes our weapon system, which means the swarm is probably what we're going to have to rely on. Let's get you over here to help put this fire out, because the last thing we want is to lose more of our weapon potential. Once we get the swarm fully charged, we will be firing it in this case, because we don't have access to the crystal heavy at the moment. Alright, swarm is fully charged. We're going to fire that at their shields, maybe? Weapons, maybe? Weapons. Three missiles fire. Only two of them hit, because one of them aimed off the ship. All right, well, we tried. Crystal Heavy is ready. We stopped them from recharging that stuff. We're about to get set on fire by a solar flare, but let's see how bad it is. Well, we lost our clone bay, but apart from that, it's not too bad. We should be able to vent this stuff pretty easily. There we go. The more open doors we have, the faster the air drains out, even though it doesn't actually make sense for that to be the case. Crystal Heavy is almost ready to knock their weapons over again. There we go. They try to surrender, saying that we're more considerably more well-armed than they would have thought. However, we don't accept their surrender, even though it's a fairly reasonable offer. We're gonna try and swarm kill them so we can get out of here quickly. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Alright, close the doors. Turn the O2 back on. Fuji needs a bit of healing, but we can't heal them directly. The ship explodes, even behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 16 scrap. Alright, well, it's not great, but it'll have to do for now. Let's send Kilimanjaro over here to fix up the clone bay. We're gonna jump out of here as soon as the first, or as soon as rather the next flare warning goes off. There's only enough room in here for one person as well, since it's a tiny little clone bay, so we have to be a bit careful about that. Let's jump over to here, maybe? We could go through the nebula, but then there's not anywhere other places for us to go. We'll do it anyway, though. We'll jump over this way and go check out the nebula. What's over here? Here we detect an automated rebel scout attacking a small refueling outpost. Well, obviously we're going to intervene to defend the outpost. Detecting the higher threat, the automated ship moves in to engage us. All right. Ooh, beam drone and a Lido missile. Well, we should be safe from the beam drone here. It's just the Lido missiles that could cause us problems. Probably are not going to need to use any missiles on these guys. Unless they get really lucky missile aim. And knock out our shields like they just did. Alright, well that's awful. It's a fire drone too, so we're going to have to swarm missile the drone control. Just barely enough to knock that system offline, which is good. 
drain the air out of here super quick so we can hopefully survive this. And we got hit again. Alright, we are having some bad luck here. Just lost our door control, so Fuji, you're going to need to go in here and fix that, because right now we need to make sure we can close these doors again so we can get our air back. Crystal Heavy, you're going to try to knock out the weapons again. Please don't miss. Finally, alright. Swarm Missiles are ready again if we need them, but hopefully we can... There we go. Resist some of this. Doors are almost back up. We need to make sure the drone doesn't come back online, so we're going to fire another Crystal Heavy over there. Close the doors. O2 on. Open internal doors. Get you in here to fix up the uh, radar so we can see if we have any problems with fires. We missed them again, which is awful. These guys must have some insane evasion right now because we just can't hit them anywhere. I could try and knock out the helm, but at the moment we need to make sure this drone does not come back online. There we go. That's much safer. Alright, let's send you back over to shields and make sure you fix that up, and then we should be okay here. They might be able to bring the missile launcher back on, but they won't be able to fire it again. There we go. They already fixed the drone control by a bar. It's a good thing we hit it when we did. So, we're going to crystal heavy them in the weapons quickly. There we go. We should have plenty of time to charge up the last crystal heavy shot, and our shields are going to be back up anyway. So, I'm actually going to leave Fuji and shields for now, I think, because getting a higher trained shield crew early on is much more valuable to us. So... We're just going to leave you there and save your new crew position. Alright, Crystal Heavy is ready. Knock him over, please. There we go. Auto Assault goes down. That could have been worse. Could have been much worse. The ship breaks apart and we salvage what we can, getting two missiles, a drone part, and eight scrap. The outpost hails us after the scout was destroyed. Thanks for the help. We've been harassed non-stop by those scouts. Take this on the house. Two fuel, another drone part, and 15 scrap. Alright, we'll take it. I think we're going to put that directly into power to level 2 shields. Won't be able to power them easily, but we can take power out of the engines and oxygen if, if necessary, and that'll let us avoid damage from more enemy types. Let's keep jumping and see what else we can do around here. Our rebel autonomous scout is exploring this beacon. We attempt to hide behind a nearby moon, but the ship finds us and begins its assault. Ooh, burst 2 and an ion, and they're starting to drop their FTL drive. If they get away, they'll no doubt warn the fleet of our position, and we can't have that now, can we? So we're probably going to have to fire some missiles at these guys. We're going to try and crystal heavy them in the helm first. But uh, this could be bad. We're going to want to power up the shields, I think, because this is going to hurt. Thankfully, they missed. That makes life a lot easier. All right, can we knock over their helm with the crystal heavy? Yes, we can. Good. Alright, I might swarm them in the weapons here if we get to full charge, just to try and make sure we take this thing out before it gets another chance to fire at us. If it looks like they're going to fire first, they are. Hmm. Fire anyway. That's some good damage, but they're going to hit us. Yeah, that's two hits we took. Crystal Heavy will kill them at least, so we don't take too much additional damage. There we go. Let's go fix up the radar, and we'll keep moving. The ship breaks apart, and we feel relief in the knowledge that we'll hopefully still be one step ahead of the fleet, getting three fuel, two missiles, and seven scrap. Well... It's not great, but it'll have to do for now. Let's turn off the super shields and put power back into the O2 again. There we go. We're on fire somewhere. I think it's here. Until our radar's fixed, though, I don't know where exactly we got hit. I think it's in one of those three rooms. I was right. Alright, so that deoxygenation should uh, fix this fire problem pretty quick. There we go. Close the doors and we'll get our crew back to positions. Let's keep jumping. Not much else we can do at this point. We need resources, so we gotta find them somewhere. An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods. Well, obviously we're gonna fight our way in there. Let's attack the automated ship to get to that storage cache. And they've got a hacking system, Artemis missiles, and a laser. Or rather an ion. That's not good, but we don't need to worry about our shields this time at least. What do they hack? They hack our sensors. Well, that's not so bad. I may want to just throw a swarm missile here, even though it's a huge waste. We're gonna try it. There we go, we knocked out the Artemises for the next time, and they hit us in the shields, which really doesn't matter, because we had a spare bar there anyway. It does hurt Fuji, but other than that, we're okay. So we're gonna try and hit them in the helm here so they can't dodge. Actually, we're gonna go straight for weapons. Make ourselves as safe as possible here. <clears throat> Now we should be safe to try and lay on the heat here and keep ourselves out of harm's way. Knocking out their helm is going to be a good idea to prevent them from evading future attacks. There we go. 
Now we're probably just going to be using Crystal Heavies until these guys are dead, trying to save our missiles for a more dangerous opponents. We're going to fire at the... doesn't really matter, does it? Engines, I suppose, so they can't fix the helm suddenly and be a back able to evade us again. They shouldn't be able to hurt us no matter what, though, because the Artemis is going to take two power to fire. So we should be safe until these guys are dead now. There we go. Alrighty. We get 17 scrap from the broken ship, and when we investigate the station... Oh, yes! The station is a storage site for military-grade weapons. We find one that can be easily attached to the ship, getting 10 scrap and a pike beam. Yeah, boy. All right, we're going to use that instead, because that sounds much better than the swarm missiles if we can actually use it. it. takes less time to fully charge up, and the crystal heavy can take down single shield bars for us. That sounds excellent. And we can also buy two power bars here to fully charge our shields without having to drain anything else. Which is also great. Is there a store or anything nearby? No, we're good. All right, we're going to burn those uh, bits of scrap here to generate a second shield bar permanently, and let's get jumping. Now we get to jump into the nebula and save ourselves some time. And we jump straight into an ion storm. Well, we find two heavily damaged ships floating nearby, the remains of a battle. We begin to harvest some usable debris when we hear the sounds of someone beaming aboard, followed by the shouts of a boarding party. We got two fuel, one drone part, and 14 scrap, as well as intruders on board. That's one of the nice, actually, boarding events, because you get that, um, reward. Where are they going? Alright, we need to get somebody over to help out Everest, otherwise Everest is going to be in for a world of hurt. I'm going to move you out of the helm for a second. They're also attacking our O2. So I'm going to send you into here, Everest, because there's only one person in there. Yes. And we're going to send you two into the helm to deal with those two, because you should be able to stop them. Although, Fuji, you are definitely low on health already, so if you stand in there by yourself, you're going to get beat up pretty fast. This is going to be bad for our survivability. We might have to medicinal airlock some of these people afterwards. Let us turn off the power here. Make sure the air, the uh, the clone bay is actually turned on. Because we are going to be losing Fuji here in a second. I'm going to bring you outside. You're going to help kill this guy in a hurry. There you go. And then you're going to come back in here and help these guys. Because we should be able to kill them all without losing anybody, and then we'll just be medicinal airlocking instead of actually losing in combat and potentially slowing things down, making it harder for ourselves. Alright, everybody here needs to go die. So, we have the clone bay turned on. Excellent. We're not going to have any silly problems with that. And we are going to suffocate our crew. It's a good thing mountains don't need any oxygen up at high altitudes. And they'll all be back again in no time. Everest, Kilimanjaro, and Fuji, can't wait to get you guys back again. I'll come back, Fuji. I hate to kill you, because your shield skill drops, and that is basically back to square one. But, honestly, you only had like three health left. It was not going to work if we tried to keep you alive. Alrighty, so next up is Everest. Welcome back. You're going back on the helm. And Kilimanjaro, you're going back to the engines when you respawn, that is. It's always a bit of a slow process regenerating your crew, but you know what? These things have to happen sometimes. All right, so it's too bad these guys are so slow as well. Either way, we have hopefully got not another ion storm up ahead. Let's go find out. No, we're good. We actually get to power all of our stuff. It's hard to see why, but this beacon is apparently a tourist destination. One of the ships at the small station is offering a deal. Unfortunately, it's not a good one, so we're gonna ignore it and keep going. Power up systems again. Thank you very much. There we go. Let's jump onwards. We got two more nebula beacons to check out before we got to go back to the regular non-nebula area. A heavily damaged Federation ship is hiding in the nebula at this beacon. Before we have time to make contact with them, they fade away into the nebula. Well, we have no way to automatically help them, so we'll try and follow them. While searching fruitlessly through the nebula, we stumble upon the, re the rebel ship which the Federation loyalists were likely hiding from. We prepare for a fight. All right, well, this ship is perfect. They can't hurt us, and we can take advantage of our pike beam here. All we have to do is crystal heavy the shields, and we should be able to zap them for a reasonable amount of damage. Crystal heavy, go. And it missed. All righty. This is the problem with the crystal heavy. It's a single-shot laser that's really slow to charge up. So if you miss, it sucks. 
these weapons, in my opinion, are both not great. Oh my goodness, really? <laughs> Come on. Come on, game. You don't need to do this to us right now. Third crystal heavy shot. Can you do this? Please don't miss again. It missed again. All right. All right. You gotta be kidding me here. Third, fourth time's the charm, fifth time's the charm. There we go, we hit him. All right, we're gonna zap a pike beam through here. Knock out some of their firepower, make it harder for them to evade, all that good stuff. Next crystal heavy's gonna knock out the engines, next pike beam's going to kill them. Even if they don't, even if they dodge this attack again, which they didn't, we can take them out. These guys offer us to give us their goods if we don't destroy their ship. They make a pretty generous offer. Six fuel, eight missiles, that's not bad. We could get a little bit more scrap if we destroy them, probably, but you know what? Since we have to, we might have to rely on the swarm missiles again soon, this is probably a good offer for us. That amount of fuel early on is good, that amount of missiles is good, and we may have to rely on them. But we're going to take that offer for the once in a blue moon. All right. All righty, well, let's keep going. What we are going to do, though, is we're going to power up our engines one more bar so we can throw the oxygen power in there if we need more dodging. And let's get going. There's still plenty more jumps to explore around this area before we need to get out of dodge. And unfortunately, we just ran into another ion storm. We jump into the middle of a plasma storm. Multiple recently incapacitated ships loom in the shadows, briefly illuminated by the lightning. Well, we can manually search the wreckage for survivors and equipment unscathed because we have a clone bay. So let's do this. Despite our caution, the lack of detection, equi detection equipment, my goodness words, allows debris to crash into our ship, damaging the hull. We salvage what we can and prepare to jump before anything worse happens. We get six fuel, five missiles, seven scrap, and four hull damage in a breach. Well, honestly, that's not that bad. I wish I could tell where the breach was. Because then we could fix it before the O2's gone, but I don't think we're going to be able to figure out where it was. There are no indicators anywhere on board the ship of where we've actually lost it since we're stuck in a storm. Any of these rooms? Nope, it's in a system room, I just don't know which one it is. Alright, well we're not going to worry about it right now. We're going to jump into the next beacon over here and fight some things. Hello, asteroid field. A pirate ship was lying in wait inside this asteroid field. It immediately moves into attack. Alright, let's fight them then. These guys can't hurt us unless they get lucky with asteroid timing. Oh, not that one. Pike beam. So, we should be safe here. We can always turn the O2 back on. There's the breach. All right. I might just leave that breached for a while. Not super important. So what we need now is for the asteroid field to finish knocking down their Zoltan shield so we can kill them here. Turn the O2 back on. Since we do have a breach, we want to make it as easy as possible for us to not get in trouble here. Come on, asteroid field, please knock them over. Oh, good timing there, shields. Asteroid, I need you to hit them one more time. I can hit them myself, but I'd much rather you do it. There we go. All right, Crystal Heavy, the shields. And we missed again. Does the Crystal Heavy actually have less aim chance or something? Because it's gotta. It's got to. We've missed way too many shots recently for that to be reasonable. And they hit us right in the clone bay for another breach with an asteroid. Lovely. All right, Pike Beam time. We're going to zap these guys for all the harm they've done us recently. There we go. Now they don't have their ion weapons. They're not going to be able to hurt us anymore. Crystal Heavy should kill them, basically. Yep, there we go. That was some shenanigans right there. Alright. Ship explodes even behind the collection of useful materials, giving us two missiles, a drone part, and 17 scrap. We do need to go fix this one. Because it actually damaged the system behind it as well, which is not great. I would love to pump some air into here by opening doors or something, but since we only have level 102, it's not possible. Keep in mind, though, as well, that uh, it's generally not worth upgrading the O2 until a bit later in the game. Are you fixing the system now, or are you still fixing the breach? You're still fixing the breach. Now you get out, we let the air regenerate in the room, so you stop suffocating, and we send you back in. Even though you take reduced suffocation damage, there's no reason to take more than is necessary. I am going to leave this breach in here, though. Alright, clone bay, get fixed. There we go. And we'll send you back over to shields. So, 33 scrap on hand. We can't spend any of it here. Let's jump out of this nebula. We're going to go 1, 2, probably 3, 4. Mercenaries are swarming the galaxy now, knowing that their less than legal services are in demand during this period of unrest. One is waiting at this beacon and hails us. However, we have no need of his services, but we are going to murder him. 
Mercenaries are worse than rebels, despite the fact that we do much mercenary work ourselves. The only honorable course is to engage them in battle. And they're harmless. That's our favorite kind of enemy, one that literally can't hurt us. Two beam weapons with no shield piercing at all. Alright, we're going to crystal heavy the shields, and this pike beam is going to absolutely devastate these poor fools. That is a six damage pike beam. The ship repeatedly hails us. Looks like they want to surrender, offering us three fuel, six missiles, and seven scrap. We've already taken a nice big offer, and that one was not as large as this. Rather, this one is not as large as that. So we should be able to kill them with no real concerns at all. Then crystal heavy them to an early grave. Goodbye, pirate rigger. There we go. That gets us a ship explosion, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap, giving three fuel, one missile, and 13 metal. All right, we will take it. So, 46 scrap under the belt. Let's keep jumping and seeing what else we can find out here in this great wide expanse of space. We stumbled across a forward scout of the rebel fleet. All right. Are you also useless? Yes, you are. They're powering up their FDL drive. If they get away, they'll no doubt warn the fleet of our position, but they've got no harmful weapons as well. So we're going to crystal heavy them in the shields and then hopefully knock out their helm and most of their systems. Cause a good pike beam through here. Should be able to hit most things. Probably going to aim here. Because that should be more dangerous to them. Should knock out two forms of escape as well. Pike beam go! There we go. That knocks out the helm and damages the engines. Turns off their weapons. Not that they could have hurt us anyway with that stuff. And one more crystal heavy to the uh, engines should kill them because they don't have the helm back up so they can't evade. There we go. Goodbye Rebel Disruptor. Nice try. Ooh. Their ship breaks apart and we're relieved to know we're still one step ahead of the fleet, getting three fuel, one drone part, twelve scrap, and an ion intruder drone. That's probably just going to be turned into cash in a second. I'm going to jump to the store here, sell it, because we need to get as much scrap as we can possibly get, so free weapons or things that we can sell are an easy way to get some. Here we find ourselves surrounded by a group of mysterious alien vessels. They hail us and apparently have some valuable technology for sale. Do they now? They have an automated reloader, stealth weapons, and a shield charge booster. Nothing too amazing in there. Automated reloader is nice. Shield charge booster is nice, but I don't really want to spend any money on those right now. Teleporter could be good. We don't have enough crew. Cloaking is awesome. We have nowhere near enough scrap. Drones aren't going to help us, and I don't like buying crew. So we're going to sell them the Ion Intruder for a bazillion scrap. 32 is excellent. I think the swarm is worth that too. So we could get even more if we wanted to be reckless and sell our swarm missiles. Rock plating's worth 40 as well if we wanted to get rid of that. We have a lot of things we could sell if we just want to get a quick buck here. We will repair ourselves for two points. They have a shield overcharger, but that takes three power and a drone control we can't really take advantage of. We could buy a drone control if we want, but I don't think we want. Especially not with how few drone parts we have. So let's come into our ship menu here. We're going to power up our engines, I'm thinking. I'd also like to power up the doors, but we don't have the uh, the power for that. I will probably spend this extra thing here on another power bar so we can run our engines up to level 4 all the time. I'm going to hold on to the swarm missiles for a little while longer, just so that if we need missiles, we'll be able to use them, because we're getting into an area soon where enemies are going to start having two shield bars. And as soon as they have two shield bars, the crystal heavy is not going to be enough, but the swarm missiles will be. So, we're going to jump forwards to the exit and get out of here. Hopefully we can get some better weapons to supplement our swarm, sell this instead, but we have to move forwards to find that first. Here we've arrived at a long-range beacon. When the FDL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector. However, we begin charging our FDL drive and do a quick scan of, local pla of a local planet. rather. We see the ruins of a recently destroyed Federation colony of the surface. Of the surface or on the surface? That seems like a weird typo to be in the, uh, the regular game. There must be a rebel ship in the vicinity. All right, let's go looking. After far too much time spent searching, we're finally able to track him down. We go into the fight pondering just how much of a head start we've lost on the Rebel fleet. I don't mind so much, though, because while we may have doubled fleet pursuit for one jump, we're on the exit beacon, so it doesn't matter at all. All right, hacking. As long as this doesn't hit the shield, we're okay. And these guys should be too, shouldn't be too bad. Hits our O2. That's annoying, but not the end of the world. Knock the shields over with the crystal heavy. Hopefully the Lido doesn't hit anything important, but really there's not many things it could hit that are important other than the weapons. Anything else that it hits should be fine. And it missed us, which is excellent. Knock over the shields, please. Thank you. And we're going to fire the pike beam up through here. Turn off their weapons, their drone, their hacking, and their engines. That's what we like to see. And the Crystal Heavy should kill them unless their evasion turns out to be really good. Nope, they're dead. Goodbye, Rebel Disruptor. Nice try. 
Ship explodes, even behind a substantial collection of useful scrap, giving us one fuel, one missile, and twelve metal. That's not great. That's not great. But that's fine. We have tons of fuel and missiles right now. Let's jump to the next sector. We have an uncharted nebula or a civilian sector. Don't really want to go to an uncharted nebula right now, even though we have a ton of fuel, so we're going to go to the civilian sector and hope for the best. Welcome to a new sector. We have to get to the exit beacon and jump to the next before the pursuing rebels can catch us. Alright, well, let's keep moving then. Distress Beacon is a good place to go. We have no money to spend at a store anyway. And we're back to full health with Fuji. Wonderful. As soon as we arrive at the distress signal, shots are fired towards our ship. It was a trap. Thankfully, it's a trap that's harmless, because again, these guys can't get through our shields. That is the value of level 2 shields as quickly as you can get them. You make so many enemies completely harmless. Can we pike beam all the way across this? Not quite. That's too bad. I can probably pike beam diagonally up through there, though. Maybe hit that side. Let's see. If we angle a pike beam like this, can I hit all four of those rooms? Is it possible? If we go right from the corner here... Mmm, no. It's a couple pixels off. Alright. Well, we can at least hit four rooms with it. Or I could make it even more effective, actually, and fire down diagonally here for five rooms. That's much better. Can't get the clone bay, but I can get everything else. The ship is trying to power up its FTL drive. It's trying to escape. Well, that might be tricky, given that it's lost most of its uh, systems here, and its escape systems are both damaged now. Crystal Heavy should take these guys out, because they probably only have one or two engine bars. There we go. Ship explodes, giving us a substantial collection of useful scrap, giving us two fuel, a drone part, and 19 metal. Well, we'll take it. Can't quite afford to power up to level 5 engines. That is a nice thing to try and get to. I'm tempted to try and grab more weapon power-ups, though. Look at this massive nebula, too. We can do a lot in here. Let's jump around in this nebula for a bit and see what we can find. Hopefully not a lot of ion storms. That would be nice. A pirate ship arrives shortly after us. Judging from the fact that it's attempting to avoid our ship, we assume that it's a smuggler trying to stay away from the beacons. But we're going to attack that pirate because we have no mercy. We power up our weapons and move in to engage. Alright. Well, these guys can only hurt us with their Leto missile. So let's see what happens here. They're going to get one Leto shot before we can potentially knock them completely out. Unless we miss the Crystal Heavy, in which case we're going to take probably a couple missile shots. And they hit us in the engines, which isn't great, but we should be okay here as long as they don't dodge. They dodged! Crystal Heavy, you're really getting on my bad side here. The fact that you just have such a long, cool, long spin-up time is awful. Crystal Heavy, hit this one, please. There we go. All right. Fry him a little bit. And these enemies are trying to escape, but they only have one bar in the engines, which is going to make it difficult. And we resisted that missile, which is awesome. Our rock plating is doing us some good here. We are going to crystal heavy them in the helm here, so they really cannot avoid us. Actually, we're going to crystal heavy them in the weapons, I think. I'd rather not get hit by any more lethal missiles if I can help it. And they can't dodge right now. Shields are coming back up, though, so we can't pike them to death. We have to wait for the next Crystal Heavy, which is unfortunate. They actually kept kept the Lido up that time, which is annoying. And they hit us in the shields, but thankfully we resisted the actual ship damage. Crystal Heavy, hit them, please. They have no engines. You can't miss. There we go. Pirate Scout goes down. The ship's cargo was not salvageable. However, they seem to have been surveying the region. They possess detailed maps and data. We download what we can to the ship's map and gain 13 scrap. That's great, actually, since we're going to be spending a bunch of time here in the nebula. We know that this is the nebula beacon we want to avoid. That's good. We're probably going to go... And there's all stores over there. Okay. Okay, probably going to miss that distress beacon. The, what it looks like we're going to do here is we're probably... Oh, can we even get across here? Oh, my goodness. That is a big gulf there. We might not be able to get across. Hmm. In that case, we're probably going to have to go, like, in here, around this way, and then down and out this way, which I don't like much. We might not be able to do many jumps here. We might have to take a much shorter route out of this sector, just because this looks like it's the only way to the exit, which is really bad. You want to have long, early sectors, especially on hard mode. An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's a storage vessel for military goods. Well, obviously, we want to get our hands on those. Let's attack the automated ship to get them. And it's harmless. Perfect. All right. Let's blast this guy, take what we can, and keep moving. I should probably send Fuji to go fix up this uh, breach soon. We'll see, though. Crystal Heavy Go. This is an enemy who's unfortunately fairly resilient to pike beams. Only four damage available, but that's not bad either way. The next pike beam will kill him, so we're going to fire a crystal heavy at the engines just for insults to injury, and then we'll destroy him in a couple more seconds. 
pike beam, much more efficient than the swarm missiles, I gotta say. Not good for taking down shields, but if you can take them down in other means, it's quite nice. We get 15 scrap from the broken ship, and when we investigate the station, we find that it was either abandoned or stripped clean. It seems to have lain unused for quite some time, and we find nothing of use. Well, that's unfortunate. Alright, well, it's not the end of the world, though. There's more beacons to jump to. We're gonna have to get a move on back into this nebula, though, otherwise the enemies are gonna quickly overwhelm us. I am gonna send Fuji into the breach here to fix it up, and then... Uh, I won't have to worry about it anymore. Not that I expect to need to use this system anytime soon, but it's better safe than sorry. And it should be closed up next repair tap. There we go. Okay. You're at what, 74 health? That'll do. I'm not going to medicinal airlock you yet. We do have 65 scrap on hand though, so I can upgrade to level 5 engines, which we will do, and power. There we go. That makes us a bit more resilient to missiles, because we have a 39% evasion now, which is pretty decent. Scans show a remote settlement being blockaded by a pirate ship. The ship hastily messages us, Stay out of this or you'll be next. Concentrate fire on. But we're not going to let them bombard this settlement for no good reason. We're going to fight them. You asked for it. They pull away from the planet and move in to engage. First laser mark two and a bomb. Alrighty. Well, we're to crystal heavy them in the shields as always. And this is a pretty interesting ship. I think we can hit five, maybe... S yeah, I think five is the most rooms we'll be able to hit with a pike beam here. I don't think we can reach up quite high enough to hit six. No, but that five is a decent five. So we will probably take that. Let's charge up though and then uh, see if we actually hit them or not. Our evasion should be good enough that at least one of these shots misses, so we should be safe from the burst laser now. There we go, and the bomb hits us directly in the shields, which is pretty awful. Probably the worst place they could have hit us, and we missed our crystal heavy, because of course we did. Alright, let's do some repairs in a hurry here, because we're going to need them. That burst laser is charged up again, the odds of them missing two shots is pretty unlikely. And a hiss in the engines this time, and a small bomb really hits us again in the shields? You've got to be kidding me. That is some outrageously bad luck. Alright, small bomb is now offline, but we have to fix up our shields in a hurry, otherwise we're going to take more burst laser damage. And all three shots hit that time, and they set our, our clone bay on fire, which means I have to get over here in a hurry, otherwise we risk losing Fuji if we actually take any more damage in this system, because these guys have impeccable aim. Just incredible aim. There we go. That means that system's now disabled long enough they're not going to be able to hit us with it again. They don't want to fight and are trying to escape. Please don't small bomb me again, otherwise I'm going to cry. Alright, Pike Beam, you have to kill them real fast. I'm going to fire right across here, and they're dead. Good. That was some shenanigans in that fight right there. We pick through the remains and contact the settlement, getting three fuel, one drone part, and 18 scrap. And, with the pirates gone, we signal the station. We appreciate what you've done, but there'll just be another ship looking to profit from our isolation soon enough. Sorry we can't give you more. They give us one missile, one drone part, and nine scrap. Jeez, that was a bad fight for us. I really don't want to sacrifice Fuji anymore either, because we're losing shield skill pretty quickly every time we do. And that is not something we can get back super quickly. So we're just going to have to try and deal with this and see what happens. I think it's interesting as well, the fire can spread to this tile, even though no people can go in it. Kind of an unusual little thing there. Alright, systems are all repaired up again. We're going to try and not sacrifice Fuji, but since they have an incredible accuracy for hitting us in the shields, we're just going to have to deal with it. I think that's a change made in hard mode as well, actually. Enemies are more likely to target rooms with systems in them, so that's partially why they hit us so hard in this mode, unlike normally. When small bombs are much more likely to hit you in empty rooms, but uh, it still sucks. It still still sucks. Let's get jumping again. We're going to head over this way. This is an empty beacon, unfortunately, but it might have some interactions we can do here. Nope, we just get boarded. There appear to be a number of small stations nearby. Before we have time to scan them, warnings go off. Rebel teleporter was used in one of the stations, and we've been boarded. Alright, let's get you over... Actually, let's get you over to here. Where are they? They're in our O2. Alright, you're going to go in here. You're going to work your way around here. They're also in our clone bay, which we cannot abide. That's awful. Alright, what we're going to do is we're going to start venting out these rooms in a second, but first we have to get you in here. Alright, now we vent, we vent, we vent, we vent. You cannot destroy our clone bay, otherwise we're probably going to die here. Alright, now we leave the room. They're trying to get in on this side. We turn off the O2 so it drains faster. 
close this door again. So those guys suffocate longer, and this is suffocating now, so we close this door, and we get you guys out of here. This should keep them locked down long enough that they suffocate to death. Somebody's still trying. And he's dead. Alright, no more intruders on board. Turn the O2 back on. Not our smoothest victory, but it is a victory. Return crew to safe positions. Open internal doors to make sure we spread our air around. Alright, we're gonna jump onwards. I should probably airlock these guys, but I'm not gonna. We're gonna jump you over here and see what happens. The tangled wrecks of many ships wait in dormancy here. We see lights flicker on what looks like debris. A rebel scout bursts from the wreckage. Alright, well they can't hurt us, so I'm okay with this. Oh boy. Let's see what happens here. We should be safe enough. The pike beam's gonna wreck these guys, and we can actually fire it. We're gonna crystal heavy them in the cloaking, though, to hopefully prevent them from dodging future attacks. We can train a bunch of shield skill here on Fuji as well, which is nice. Alright, there goes the cloak. They can't dodge. Pike beam shreds them. That takes out most of their systems. And next Crystal Heavy will take them out because they've got no evasion left since their helm is fully destroyed. Nice try, Auto Scout. Get out of here. Ship explodes, even behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material, giving us one fuel, one drone part, and 17 scrap. Alright, we're up to 44 scrap. I'm going to save some because we're going to be going to a store no matter what here. How many jumps do we have at this speed? Probably not too many. If it takes... If we're mostly in the nebula, it's going to be about... One... Two-ish... Like, three-ish, four-ish, this is like right on the five line-ish, it might be a little bit over. Um, which means we can only really go one, two, three, because we have to kind of get out of here, because this is going to be a double speed jump. So we only really have three or four jumps to get here, which means we're going to lose so much. It's not good. Hmm... Yeah, this is a really bad sector. We're gonna go over this way, though. We gotta head towards the exit, otherwise we are going to get overrun. A Manta's ship, lost in the storm, hails us. Sensors are out. We have no local telemetry. We will take yours. We detect a power increase in their weapon systems, and they're trying to board us, which is real bad, because our crew is all badly wounded. So, Fuji, you need to get over here to the doors pronto. We also have no idea where they're gonna be when they do board us. They're in O2. Alright, Vento 2. Easy. And they're going the wrong way, which is what we like to see. Okay. Turn off the O2. There we go. That's them taking more damage here. Smack them around a little bit. We should be able to knock out most of their core systems with a good pike beam here. There we go. Hopefully our little Mantis friend decides to go home soon. That room should have no air in it in a matter of seconds, and they've gone back home. Perfect, that's what we wanted. Close the doors, turn the O2 back on, open internal doors, and close internal doors. Send you back over to shields, we'll crystal heavy them in the shield system, and now they're sitting ducks for a kill on our next shot. Like so. Doesn't matter even how many rooms we hit, we'll need to hit them once. Goodbye, Mantis fighter. You tried. Ship explodes, even behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material, giving us two fuel, a drone part, 16 scrap, and an anti-combat drone. Well, it's something else to sell, I suppose. Nothing particularly useful to us directly, but you know what? We'll take what we can get. So I think we're going to go one, two, and three, because it looks like we should have enough space to get to the store, even if we take another jump here into the nebula. Unless this isn't in the nebula. This doesn't look like it's in the nebula. Oh my goodness. What a bad setup. This looks like it's an Ion Storm invasion, because there's no ship here, so they're just going to throw crew on us. Which is not what we want. I could probably make this jump back, but if I can't make this jump, then we've really messed up. I think that's like the same distance as this is, though, so like realistically, if we can make this jump to here, we should probably... Well, it would be a bit different, I suppose, because it's this distance instead, which is definitely a little bit longer. I don't know. I think, I think we'd probably be able to make that jump. I know people are going to tell me that we should turn on the jump beacon distances so I can see what we're actually looking at here, but I don't like doing that, which is why I don't 
do that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Actually, I think it's probable that we wouldn't be able to do it, because it's probably about the same distance as this is, as these are. <sighs> we have to play it safe, which sucks, but we're going to do it, so let's get over here. Is this a free item? Nope, free stuff though. Not much remains in this abandoned system, however scans reveal a nearby mining platform with some salvageable materials, getting us one fuel, one drone missile, and 15 scrap. And I was right, we could not make that jump, so I'm kind of glad I didn't now. This is a sucky system though. Let's jump to the store, we lose so many jumps here. A transmission from the nearby planet indicates an outpost below which offers supplies to travelers. We send down an away party to check it out. Hopefully they sell weapons here. They do not. I really need them to sell me some weapons. I'll sell them the anti-drone, because we're going to have to rely on the swarm missile soon, and I do not want to have to be relying on the swarm missile. Repair ourselves up to two-thirds health, which is generally a pretty safe place to be stopping. We need to save our cash for weapon upgrades, realistically. Distress beacon, here we come. Once you arrive at the location of the distress call, a civilian ship hails us. Thanks for responding to our beacon. Our FTL navigation has gone haywire and we can't plot a course to the nearest depot to get it fixed. Could you lead us there? Sure, as long as it's in the next sector, because if it's in this one, I can't get there. Good. Take this bit of scrap as a down payment. We'll use your jump signatures to follow you. You're really helping us out here. Gives us nine scrap and gives us a quest marker for the next sector. All right, well, the scrap reward is awful, but hopefully it'll give us something better later. And I could have made that jump, but... All right, we might have been able to get one more jump out of this sector, but let's get to the exit beacon and get out of here because this sector sucks. We've arrived at Long Range Beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector. Here we find a large asteroid field nearby. Short range scanners may discover useful materials while we wait for the FTL to recharge. Let's explore the asteroid field, and we get nothing but damage. But the asteroid field proved more dangerous than expected, and some asteroids managed to get through our ship's defenses. We took five hull damage and damaged our sensors, and set them on fire too, from the sounds of it. Let's get you two over there, even though you're super slow, because you'll be able to put out that fire without any personal harm. Nope, the fire is elsewhere. Alright, that's unfortunate. Let's go hunting for fires, then. There it is. And you know what? I'm just going to vent this. Hopefully it doesn't spread into our clone bay, but I'm just going to vent that of air as well. There we go. Okay. For some reason, I thought the fire would be in the same place that took the damage. Let's send our crew back to their stations, and let's get ready for business once again. We're getting pretty unlucky with some of these random events, but that's only to be fair. We found a bunch of free items and stuff as well already, so let's jump onwards. Next sector is our only option. This is the only way to this beacon as confirmed by the map. Thanks for nothing, you butt. We only lost... Well, we could have jumped probably two or three more nebula beacons and one more regular beacon. So we missed probably... 40 scrap because of this. Maybe a bit less because we're on hard mode. Sucks, but there's nothing we can do about it. Here there's an abandoned sector, there there's a Zoltan sector. We're going to go to the abandoned sector because it's more interesting. Might be the death of us, but we'll find out once we get there, I suppose. There have been a number of reports of advanced ships salvaging the wrecks and abandoned mining facilities in this sector. Could it be that the Lanius have resurfaced? Well, we'll have to find out later. Although, of course it is. It's the abandoned sector. But, this is where we're ending the episode for now. So, thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing some FTL's Advanced Edition here with the Rock Cruiser Type C, the VSS Mountain, with Everest, Kilimanjaro, and Fuji. If you've enjoyed the episode so far, let me know what you thought about in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. And until then, thanks for watching, and bye bye Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here and welcome back. It is time for a little bit of STL's Advanced Edition. We haven't played FTL in quite a while, but I figured it's time we got in here. So let's take a look at the ships and I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing a little bit differently today. As you can see here on the ship selection screen, we're using two mods in addition to our normal combination of visual mods. 
the individual mod links you can find in the description below. But specifically this time, we're using two mods by Lord Trilobite. The detailed crew portraits, which you can see in the bottom left there, which have uh, different uh, face views for all the different races. And we're also using the detailed ship Greebles graphics mod, which shows these internal images of all the ships that you look at, which is pretty cool. Some of them have some nice little details, which I think uh, really we make it worthwhile. I don't have much of crystals internally, which is interesting. I think my favorite little addition, even though it's really not a big one, is just having this so section of hull cut out so you can see that somebody actually could use those airlocks. <laughs> this is a bunch of little interesting little details like that that I'm quite fond of. But what we're going to be doing today is we'll be playing with the Rock Cruiser Type C, specifically the Tektite. This ship is an interesting one. It is, for one thing, the only ship apart from the Crystal Cruiser that starts you with a Crystal Crew. So for people to get a chance to do anything else, though. Yep, there goes the weapon. All right, well now there's literally no point in using the swarm missiles because they can't hurt us anyway. So we're just going to keep battering them with the Crystal Heavy, and we'll see what we can do. There we go. They still can't do anything to us. They've repaired it again, but again, the Crystal Heavy should knock it out before they get a chance to repair it any further, so they're not going to get a chance to do much. And we missed. Alright, we may need to actually use the Swarm Missile for once here. Let's see, we've gotten through this fight so far with no damage, after a lucky bunch of misses from the Flax and the Lasers. Crystal Heavy comes in, and never mind, knocks it back offline. Alright, well... This is looking like it's going to be a pretty safe battle, all things considered. Last crystal heavy shot, go. And that's a dead pirate fighter, never had to use these swarm missiles. We got through that with no damage at all. Pirate ship breaks apart, so we hasten to contact the civilian ship, gathering one fuel, one drone part, and 19 scrap first. When we do contact the civilians, they say, This sector has become increasingly dangerous for friends of the Federation. I think my crew can patch up some of your hull damages, thanks. Well, that would be great if we took any hull damage at all. Thanks anyway, let's keep moving and see if we can get anything else around here. And we jump straight into a sun, alright. This beacon has been placed too close to a supergiant Class M star. The ship will gradually overheat until we get out of there or die. A pirate, oblivious to the danger of the sun, moves in to engage this ship, and let's see what we can do here. Here goes nothing. The data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. We need supplies for the journey, so we have to make sure we explore each sector before moving on to the next, and of course we have to get to the exit before the Pursuing Rebel fleet can catch up. Alright, so, let's see what we got here. We're going to power up weapons, we're going to power up the engines by turning off our clone bay for now, because it doesn't actually need to be on really, unless people are actively dying. And, let's get down to business. So, store over there. That doesn't help us at all. Let's jump in this direction and see if we can hopefully get a good start here. We're playing on hard mode, so a good start is definitely an important thing. We come out of this jump to see laser blasts coming from the other side of the beacon. It looks like someone's under attack from pirates. Well, obviously, we ought to help the civilians. We power up weapons to engage the pirate ship. All right, these guys have flak and a heavy laser. Nasty combo, but we should be able to hopefully neutralize them, and odds are those weapons won't be firing in sync anyway. So we should be more or less okay. Yeah, that's good. All right, we might take a bit of damage here, but we'll see. Now we're good, and we knocked out the flat cannon, so they're now harmless. We have swarm missiles if we want them, but honestly, we don't need them. That's the other thing about the swarm missiles. If you don't have to fire them quickly, you probably don't need them anymore. But we're going to crystal heavy through here. We've missed. All right, if they get that recharged, I'm going to swarm them. We'll see uh, We'll see how this goes. It's looking like we're going to hit them with the crystal heavy again. People trying to unlock the crystal sector. This removes most of the steps, and all you're going to have to do is get to the crystal homeworlds. That makes things, or rather the, ho the rock homeworlds, to be able to get through, which makes things a whole lot easier. You do also have two rock crew members. This ship, like all other Type C, starts with a clone bay as well, but it doesn't start with any of the other fancy systems that the uh, Advanced Edition has added into the game. It does, however, start with two interesting weapons. For one thing, it has a Crystal Heavy Mark I, which is a single-shot, one-shield-piercing laser, which does two damage every 13 seconds. It's not amazing, but it's something. You also have a Swarm Missile Launcher. And this is an interesting missile launcher because it has the potential to be very wasteful or very good. If you fire it after 7 seconds, it fires what is effectively a Leto missile, a single 1 damage shield piercing shot. However, if you fire it after 21 seconds, it only consumes 1 missile but fires 3 shots. All 1 damage, all full shield piercing, fire chance, all that good stuff. 
So the interesting thing about it is that it rewards you for being able to be slow. If you are able to charge it up fully, it's more damaging. Now, in my opinion, this makes it a bad weapon. <laughs> because, specifically, if you have the resources to be able to make it safe to charge it up, you probably don't need to be using missiles anyway. If you need to break through their shields in a hurry, you're going to want to fire it quickly, but then it's inefficient and you have to wait. So, really, it seems to me that this system is not amazing. Also, the fact that it's not accurate. It has a bit of a shotgun effect. Um, so you can't specifically target exactly one room. Sometimes the missiles will not hit. But we'll give it a try, and we'll see what's what. We'll be playing with Advanced Edition content enabled. We'll be playing on hard mode, as we have for all of these YouTube runs. And uh, we're going to rename the ship and stuff before we get started. This is going to be a fairly straightforwardly named ship. This is going to be the VSS Mountain. And we are going to be renaming all of our crew after uh, particularly prominent mountain peaks. Not based in any kind of rating system, just ones that I have chosen from uh, the uh, the available high high prominency mountains. For our first crew member, we are going to be naming you. Hmm, I'm going to name you Everest after the most obvious of uh, large peaks. There we go. We are also going to be naming you, Mr. Rockman, after another one of the more prominent peaks. You're going to be Kilimanjaro. There we go. And our crystal crew is going to be renamed after uh, Mount Fuji, I think. There we go. So we have Everest, Kilimanjaro, and Mount Fuji. Fuji being in Japan, of course. Kilimanjaro being in Tanzania. And Everest being, I believe, on the border between Nepal and China. So, let's get to business with...